why physicians don't make great investors. You might think that's kind of odd, and I thought it was odd too as well. I've worked for about 10 years in medical sales, working around a lot of physicians, but it's true. A lot of physicians don't always make the best financial decisions when it comes to their investments, when it comes to growing their wealth. Uh, often they can get caught up in you know, having nicer cars and bigger houses and more trips and not actually be putting money away and know how to invest uh, in, in a passive way for the long term. So with me today, I have a friend. I have uh, Harry Nima Sakara, who's here, and he's going to be talking with us about why physicians don't make great investors and what they can do to help prepare themselves. So it's help prepare themselves. So welcome, Harry. How are you today? Hey, Bronson. How are you? I'm doing really good. Really good. Thank you. Thank you for You're having me on your show. Oh, it's awesome, man. Really excited to have you. I just, I have so much respect for people that are physicians that are really out there that take an oath to serve. One of my best friends growing up as a physician and just that oath where you're really saying, Hey, I'm really trying to be out here and serve people and really help them in a substantial way, which is huge. So we're going to talk about how physicians, uh, you know, can invest and how we can help them to make better decisions. So, uh, why don't you talk to us a little bit about, um, a little bit about your story and kind of how you got started in investing and in real estate. Uh, yes, absolutely. So um, you you know already I'm a physician. My wife is also a physician. Uh, we are both from uh, Peru, from South America, and that's where we uh, did our medical school together. And uh, then we came here to the U.S. to continue our training. So because of the nature of our training, we have been like in different states. Actually, we have been like in Pennsylvania and Virginia. Then we moved to Texas, South Texas. And then like after a couple of years in private practice, we decided to move to Dallas uh, where we decided to settle finally. Uh, after a couple of months, uh, we bought up our uh, first uh, um, uh, residence here in Dallas. So we, uh, we really like the area and, and, and the school for our kids and they love it. So we decided just to stay. And just a couple of months later, uh, we decided to buy our first uh, income property. And then like uh, starting more and more uh, single family houses. And after a couple of years, we decided to go into commercial real estate. So let's slow down one sec here. So you're from yeah. Peru, which is one of my favorite countries in the world. I've been to 38 countries and Peru is amazing. That's awesome. Somebody read Rainbow Mountain, Machu Picchu. Yeah. Uh, and you guys are probably from the city. Are you from Lima? Yes. Yes. Where okay. 40% of the population lives. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It's, in Peru. It's, it reminded me a lot of Los Angeles. I live in Los Angeles. It kind of has yeah. that feel a little bit. So it feels, uh, it felt very much at home. Um, so you basically, you moved out, you moved here, you got a property, how many single families or small, uh, properties did you have when you started? Yeah. So, uh, currently we, we own, uh, nine properties in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Uh, so we're, uh, buy and hold, uh, uh, investors, we're landlords and, um, yeah, that, that, that's here in Dallas Fort Worth. Okay. Gotcha. And then, so, so you decided from there, you're like, okay, this is going well. Uh, we want to, what was the reason you wanted to scale up and kind of do bigger properties? Yeah. So initially as, as you, as we always say, like uh, how you get into real estate, we usually start like with single family homes, like is like the usual bread and butter of real estate in the U S right. Like, and, and, and it's also because of a part of education that people don't know other ways to go into real estate too. So we, we start buying these single family homes initially as you can expect, it's still like even a couple of years ago, the market was really hot and uh, they were expensive. So we decided to go initially off market and buying these properties. And it was working well, but at some point, even off market properties were getting super expensive, then, <laughs> even in this area. And um, uh, we have a really good property management uh, manager and he, he's actually a good friend of mine. Uh, but it's still like, even with a property manager, it, it, it requires a lot of time and work to manage them. Like the day-to-day -day phone calls with, with him. And also like uh, you need to do other things like uh, insurance, mortgage, taxes at the end of the year. Uh, so at some point it becomes like a second job. So that's, yeah. that's why we decided at some point, like about like a year and a half, two years ago to move into uh, uh, multifamily and commercial real estate. So Harry, I'm smiling over here because I just, I can totally relate because I had, <laughs> you know, four or five single family houses yeah. and it was a lot of work and I wasn't even managing anything. They were all out of state. Yeah. And so I think a lot of times we think that, um, you know, that's kind of the path. And that's honestly, like, I'd say almost most people, that's just kind of the road we go down. Um, but it's amazing um, when you realize that, you know, one roof, one house, it's, it's very similar to doing a larger deal. And, you know, I just, I kind of look back and think, man, $150 million in real estate later and, and 1400 units is actually not as hard as people think. And a lot of people think that 
you've got to start out small and you've got to do it this way. And we do have very favorable terms to get loans on some of these smaller properties, which is great. You know, you put, you know, 10 or 20% down and you can basically start getting all these properties and it's great. They can cash flow, but it's getting harder now in the market to be able to do it. And even then there's the difficult difficulty of not really being able to scale. And that's a question I think every person, every listener, even myself should ask is say, if I did twice as many or, or 10 times as much of what is what I have right now, would it be more work and would it become another job? And that's just kind of what you said. I think a lot of professionals, whether you're a physician, a business owner, a CPA, an attorney, uh, a retiree, your time is so valuable, right? So your time per hour is really valuable. So for you to be taking these calls and, you know, and it's not like you're managing day to day, but they're like, Hey, yeah. until it's broken, should we fix it? You know, the tenant's not paying, what should we do? And it's, it's just like decision fatigue, right? You're like, I'm, I don't want to you. think about this. Right. It's like, if you yes. have, you know, it's like adding five or 10 teenagers to your life. It's like, I don't know. I don't want to make all these decisions. <laughs> that, is, that is correct. And, and the decisions, the responsibilities and the liabilities are also yours. So that, that, that's very important to remember when, when right. you are like a lander. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So talk to us a little bit about, so once you realize, okay, we want to go bigger, we want to do more, uh, what was your next step to, to basically get into multifamily? Yeah. And, and this is something that I always recommend, like any person who talks with me, the first step always should be education, right? Mm -hmm. Like doing your research and educating yourself. And this can, and this can take some time, right? Like it, it can take a couple of months, but also at the end of that, I always also recommend take action. Right, like we, yeah. because education and knowledge is very important, but without action, you don't get anywhere. Right, like so that's what we did. So uh, after these nine properties that we acquired, uh, it, it was getting to a point again. It was more difficult to manage them, so we start like doing more research and investigating other ways to invest in real estate, and that's where we got into multifamily. So we start like going like into uh, conferences, meetups. I started uh, listening to audiobooks like the Michael Blank, Jake and Gino. Joe Fairless, I mean, all these books that, 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 that we know and have read and have listened to. And uh, yeah, I mean, like I was, I was sold. I mean, like, I, like, I really like the idea of working together with other people in groups uh, from people with different backgrounds and, and with, with the same objective. Right. Yeah. And that's really, I, I just love what you shared because it's so true. A lot of times we think, well, what do I do? I don't know how to get there but it really comes down to the people that you meet and the books that you read. There's a quote by a guy named Tommy Tremendous Jones. His name was Tremendous, or his nickname was <laughs> Tremendous. And he'd say, in five years, you'll be the same as you are right now, except for the books that you read and the people that you meet. And so the power of networking and education cannot be understated. I mean, really, That's you might powerful. be just one new relationship or one book or one conference away from getting to where you want to go. And so that's amazing. When you meet someone who's doing something totally different, your whole, your eyes can be open and these people can become uh, teachers and tutors and helpers and partners on getting you where you want to go. So that's, so that's obviously that's happened to you. So tell us a little bit. Um, um, I want, I want to get more into the physician mindset in a minute, but just tell us real quick, tell us a little bit about your multifamily experience now, whether passively or actively some of the, some of the things that you've done to this point. Yeah, so we were uh, very lucky and grateful at the same time to join like an investing uh, group. So uh, we go together with other investors and operators, some of them with a lot of experience who have been in the market like for five, 10 years. And we partner up with them like uh, to, to buy these big apartment complexes that otherwise a couple of years ago, I like I thought it was going to be impossible like to, to buy together, <laughs> right? right? So uh, we, we were able to do that. We were able also to bring awareness to other physicians, other uh, uh, professionals uh, to invest passively with us. And, and the journey has been amazing. Again, like it's, it's not necessarily about like the business. It's not necessarily about what you make at the end. It's, it's the person you become with all what, what you're doing. Yeah. So uh, I, we, we found that very important, my wife and I, and we're really loving the journey for now. I, I love what you shared because it really is, you know, about the journey and the person that you become. Uh, a lot of times we think, you know, I'll be happy when I retire. I'll be happy when I get to this place of financial freedom and income. But I think it's really about living life to its fullest now and really trying to work those things in your life and learning in the moment now. And so it's not the life deferred plan. And I think I, I watched that with a lot of physicians. I watched that with a lot of my coworkers at different companies I'd work at. I'd be like, oh, when I retire, I'm going to do these things. But you work them exactly. in now 
And then you start to develop more skills and learning and freedom. And, and, you know, it, it, it's opened up to me as I've been able to actually quit my corporate job and be able to travel more. And like, I, I'm going on trips all the time now, which is great, but um, it, awesome. it's, it's really fun. So talk yeah. to us a little bit about the uh, physician mindset and why physicians just with the training that they get, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for physicians, tremendous amount of respect for the amount of work it takes and the time and the effort, but the mindset and the skills that get you to become a great physician don't necessarily make you a great investor. And sometimes they're actually the opposite. And there's actually yeah. sayings by Ken McElroy and Robert Kiyosaki that, you know, why A students, a lot of times work for C students, right? So yes. it's like, yes. but, but t- talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, I read the book too. Yes. And, and yeah, that, that's a very important concept. And to your question, I, I mean, I would say like, it's kind of a complex answer. Um, and, and I can tell you from my story, like, um, it takes many, many years to become a physician, as you, as you can understand. For some of us, we have spent more, of, more than half of our lives in, in classrooms and, and studying and, and getting better to become a physician. So like, uh, and, and after that, and when you, when you finished medical school, you find out you don't necessarily have good financial education, either in school or in medical school. So that, that's one of them. And then like when we finish uh, medical school and we start to to actually practice medicine, it's what happens. Like we have devoted so much time into medicine uh, that then we're focused on either building a practice or working for the hospital or working for your employer or trying to pay your student loans or trying to buy a house that finally you can afford that you don't necessarily focus on these things. And uh, like I would say, like I would say, like the last thing is also we um, invested so much time and in in medicine that we don't necessarily know other ways of investing. So we're we're kind of people who invest and tend to do things that we are familiar with and we know. So we mostly invest like again in stocks, in mutual funds, in the 401k, the 457, but we haven't been exposed to other ways of investment and other ways that could be great investments and with great benefits. You said something really key is, you know, we, we go with what we know and what we're familiar with and what we're trained for. And the confused mind always says no, right? If, if somebody pitches me a deal, exactly. I just, I don't really understand. I was like, well, I just, I, or I don't know anybody that's done it. I might, my, my bias is always going to be to say no. And that's yeah. not a, necessarily a bad thing, but the idea of if something sounds really good, or even in some ways too good to be true, it's worth researching and it's worth finding out. Exactly. But the challenge is that, you know, even in medicine, I think, I would think this even exists in medicine where you know, it is a practice of medicine, right? It's not, there's, it's a science and a practice, but there's things that continually change. And so you have skills that you know how to treat things a certain way. You have a lot of experience around that. And when you encounter something that there's just no experience and there's not, maybe there's some data, but it's like, well, you just kind of have these collected, you know, anecdotal experiences. It's hard to really get solid data. Right. And then with each group is, is there really any sure thing? Well, there's really no sure thing. So, but, but I love what you did and you took action. And that's what I tell a lot of people that are higher net worth or physicians or other things where they have, it's like, they've never had any experience. I say, well, if you have a net worth of $5 million, uh, and again, I'm not giving personal advice of what someone should do, just, you know, theoretical, but uh, to invest, you know, maybe a small amount, maybe 50 or a hundred thousand in a deal yes. with someone, because it'll get you some experience. And even if it doesn't go great, it'll probably go okay. And you'll learn a lot. And that's what you said. You commit yourself to that process of learning, which I think is huge. So why don't you talk a little bit? I feel like multifamily itself is an unfair asset class. Can you talk about some of the, the reasons you love multifamily as a physician and just some of those benefits? Yeah, to the same degree, I, I feel the same. It's a little bit like unfair comparing to other investments. Right. Uh, so, so, so one of the things I love is, for example, like uh, the cash flow, right? Like so, and, and I can tell you this firsthand because I also invest in single family houses. Single family houses is, uh, was like a couple of years ago and now it's even more difficult and almost impossible to get cash flow. I mean, of course you get appreciation, right? Like in, in, uh, in areas like Dallas Fort Worth or California or like big cities, uh, the, the houses are going to get appreciated, but you don't live from appreciation, right? That you live from cash flow. Mm-hmm. So that's, that, that's a very important uh, term. Uh, the other thing is uh, that, that we love about like multifamily and commercial is the leverage because you can leverage people and you can leverage also money, right? Like, so you leverage like money from, from the lenders and you leverage people. Like, so you work together in teams with other people who's experienced, who have made already all the work for you and, and you can use them. And they're also like getting help from you, like in getting these, these multifamily assets. Uh, 
And the last thing like that, that, that I believe was, is also true is uh, they are recession resistant, right? And we also all have the experience from 2007, 2008, when the multifamily sector, the degree of default was even less than 1% comparing to other assets that was way higher. So th 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 those are three key things that we, we, we really love about multifamily. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it's uh, it's amazing too. The leverage is being used in a time of inflation um, that you know they're just continually printing more money. You know, forty percent of the existing currency, either digitally or physically, was created in the last two years. So the yes. fact that you can use leverage that's you know debt that's almost free. I mean, it's so cheap. And inflation, some estimates, is as high as fifteen to twenty percent right now. Um, it's just hard yes. to see if you're buying in the right area how you could really go wrong. Uh, obviously, there's always ways any investment can go wrong. And so obviously do your own diligence. But it's something that I just wish more people took time to educate themselves, because I don't think Wall Street is going to have the same long term results. Uh, at least, <laughs> you know, it's gonna have a lot more volatility than something yes. like uh, this asset. So um, what do you how do you feel about right now? Obviously, things are changing, inflation's high, there's talk of, you know, recession or tapering or different things. Why don't you talk from just uh, an economic perspective, and what do you see? How do you see multifamily doing in the near, you know, near and kind of the next twelve to twenty-four months here? Yes, as as you're mentioning, it's to some degree intriguing, right? Because like uh, all the prices are going up, uh, people are even like uh, to some degree paying even like over like the asking price. And I mean, we and in our group, we we proud ourselves to try to do a conservative underwriting. Right, like so. Still, like it, like it seems like uh, the basis of multifamily and commercial real estate are really good because there's a deficit in housing across the United States, and it doesn't seem that it's going to get any better in the next, like as you're saying, like two, five years, and even ten years. Even though we're making some steps toward ad addressing the issue, so still, I believe it's going to be like a, a good place to be in the next uh, two, two to five years. I think so. I think that the trend of the dollar is to continue to depreciate and, you know, being in assets that, you know, are continually going to be needed. They say there's a shortage right now of somewhere between 4.8 and 6 million apartment units, which depending on which source you read is, is huge. Exactly. I mean, there's just so much more need there. So yeah. it's crazy. So let's, let's roll the clock, clock back here a little bit, Harry. Um, yeah. And if you could go back a few years and just say, you know, even maybe when you were doing your single family or before that, What's one thing you wish you'd kind of known before you you got started? Yeah, um, I, was, I sometimes say it's like I wish I had started earlier. <laughs> like, and I think like this this this, this is what uh, every real real estate investor says. <laughs> is that correct? I yeah. mean, like, uh, yeah. yeah, and and so one of the things that happens is that. Um, professionals or physicians think they're just going to be physicians or their lives or lawyers or accountants. So have like an open mind and, and being able to explore other like uh, uh, adventures or, or, or journeys, right? Like, I, I mean, of course, being uh, educated, doing research and being conservative about like what you're doing in life, because I mean, it's not necessarily only you, it's also your family, it's your kids, other people that depend on you. And in the journey that I mean, and you are too, I mean, also we have our investors, so they depend on us. So, so being like more, more, uh, more, more thinking about that is important. Yeah, they said the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The second best time is today, right? And yes. I think, you know, when I first started, my cousin, who's a multifamily guy said, you know, everybody he knows wishes they had started doing multifamily sooner. And I had barriers like, well, I don't feel like I don't have the money to do it. Like, well, you can raise the money. So either you have time or you have money, but yes. whichever one you have, if you don't have, you know, I didn't have a lot of time, but I've made time just kind of as, you, as you're doing and you're still practicing, you're a practicing physician, but you make time yeah. for this because you see the value in it. But some people have money and they, they don't have time. And so they'll invest their money and, uh, but you can, you can really start with either. Uh, what advice would you give to someone just starting out or kind of considering multifamily as an investment? Yes, again, like uh, I, I think I mentioned this before, like in general, real estate and multifamily are a great uh, field in, in investment to be right now. So, I mean, I would advise everyone to, to get interested in this field and also to take some education and after that, taking action in the next like a uh, couple of months after you start your education on this. I think that's very important to be educated before you go into any, any endeavor. Yeah, absolutely. You know, education is huge. And education combined with action, right? Because we can learn all we want. We can learn everything about everything. And then if we don't yeah. actually finally take the first yes. step, 
it's obviously something that you know we, we know a lot of things in theory <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I don't take action yes exactly uh harry what's uh, what's one resource that's helped you in your real estate whether a book or an app a tool a website just some tool that's helped you yeah, well, in general, like uh, the way I started was with uh, with forums, with websites, you, you, you know, like the bigger ones, like the the, big, the bigger pockets for for physicians are like the white coat investor, and then I mean all the audiobooks I, I mentioned to you, audiobooks and podcasts like like yours are very important to get more education and to feel to some degree, as I mentioned initially, more comfortable in investing in, in other things other than stock market. That's great. That's great. How can people connect with you, Harry? Yeah, so we have our website, which is uh, nimaequity.com. Nima is N as in Nancy, I-M-A, equity.com. And uh, where we have actually, um, we, we are very big in education, as I mentioned before. So we have the, our seven-day uh, email investing course for physicians. And we also have our YouTube channel that we started a couple of months ago and also to bring up more awareness about this. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Harry, I just want to honor you. You uh, really bring a humility with you as far as being able to learn. I know a lot of physicians uh, are not really always open to things that they may feel they're, they're kind of a, a novice or learning in. And obviously you've had experience in this over the years, but it's very evident that you are hungry to learn and grow and also really help others to grow. And I think that's the thing I admire about you most is that you're committed to really helping people on their journey, particularly uh, medical professionals, physicians, nurses, uh, other folks. And we've talked a little bit offline about that, but I just want to say, I really appreciate you for helping people to uh, understand multifamily investing and other types of passive investing, because it actually allows them to be more free in their time. So Thanks so much for coming on today. I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate you and I look forward to uh, connecting and here again in the near future. Uh, thank you for your kind ones, words, Bronson. I really appreciate it. And I had a really good time today. Thank you so awesome. much. Thanks, Harry. All right. I like Harry a lot. What I like about Harry is that he is just a genuine real guy who's done awesome in his career. He's helping a lot of people but he really is committed to learning and growth. And I think it can be really intimidating for anybody, no matter your background, no matter your skill set, to learn something new, to say, you know what, I don't have all the pieces that I need, and yet I really need to learn and commit to the process. And he talked about just the process of growth, the journey ahead. I think that's just a great approach to life, right? Is that life is not a destination. That's not somewhere we're going. We'll experience life or we'll have retirement and we'll ride off in the sunset, but we're trying to work those ideas and learning and principles into our life right now. Because if I can do that right now, I can actually start to actually enjoy those things. If I value travel, if I enjoy, if I value family time, then I'll cut out other things to make time for those things. If I value learning, then I'll make time to read. I mean, my goal this year is to read 60 books. So I just want to encourage you to continue to learn. If you are a real, excuse me, a medical professional, or you're a business owner, or uh, you have a startup, or you're a, you know, a, a CPA or something, uh, your time is very, very valuable. And I would say for all of us, our time is our most valuable resource. So how you invest your time is really, really important. Going to meetups, going to conferences, reading books, spending time talking with people and learning and spending time that you really are, are getting value out of. It's really, really important. So the first step to get where you want to go is to get out and learn. Part of the education is not a formal education necessarily where you go get a degree in real estate investing. And that's what can feel different. Like I have a master's degree in cross-cultural studies. I have a BA in business, but uh, I had to kind of leave some of that behind and say, okay, I'm willing to go learn and get another type of education, which is really from people that I meet from the stories that I hear from the, from YouTube University, from all of these things out there that really help us to grow. So anyway, I'd love to hear from you what the best uh, thing you learned out of this uh, was. So feel free to reach out to me, let me know. Uh, you can shoot me an email, bronson at bronsonequity.com. Love to connect with you. And uh, I will look forward to seeing you on the next episode. You've been listening to the Mailbox Money Podcast. For more free resources, articles, and videos, go to bronsonequity.com. There you can download your copy of the special report, The Single Best Investment Strategy During and After a Pandemic. None of the information shared here is an offer to buy a specific investment, and this is for educational purposes only. Consult your financial, legal, and tax professionals and use your own common sense before making any investment decisions. Thanks for joining us, and be sure to tune next time for more Mailbox Money.